Hey there, welcome to the Mixing Touch. Thanks for dropping by my bar. I'm Alex and my goal is to help you recreate luxury cocktails in the comfort of your own home. But today I'm actually going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm not going to be mixing up a cocktail. Instead, I'm going to be walking you through this gorgeous gin collection. I've laid out here in front of you a very diverse selection of gins, each one having its own unique characteristics and bringing something special to the table. First off, we have the Bombay Sapphire with its very sleek, squared off blue bottle and Queen Victoria on the cover. This is one of the most popular and most accessible gins on the market. What a lot of people don't realize is that Bombay Sapphire is actually owned by Bacardi the same company that's well known for rum. Bombay Sapphire gets its name from the fact that gin was extremely popular in India during the British rule. The sapphire in the name comes from the Star of Bombay, which is a very impressive sapphire gem that sits on display at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington DC. And the blue bottle is clearly an attempt to mimic that sapphire gem. This is 47% alcohol by volume, and it's made out of 10 different ingredients, including juniper, coriander, and lemon peels. It has a floral scent with a hint of sweetness from the lemon peels. Next I have Junipero Gin. Uh, junipero is a Spanish word for juniper, and this is made by Anchor Brewing Company in San Francisco. The same company that's known for Anchor Steam Beer. So that same facility has a distillery and a brewery and you can imagine how amazing the aroma must be. As the name implies, this is a very juniper forward gin. In fact, that's the most common way of describing it. And it's bold and spicy. This is 49% alcohol by volume, which is extremely high. And the company itself refers to this as San Francisco strength. and the scent is very botanical. And I get a hint of coriander at the end. And here you have Plymouth Gin. This is by far the oldest of the bunch. You can think of this as the great grandfather of gins. This is produced by Blackfriars Distillery and the company has been around since 1793. But their history actually dates back even further to an old monastery that's been around since the 15th century. And one thing I did want to show you, which not everybody notices, is this monk on the back. And this is a clear testament to their heritage. This is 41.2% alcohol by volume. So not quite as strong as some of the other ones here. And of course you get the usual juniper, as well as some cardamom. Then we also have the Tanqueray 10. Yes, that's how it's pronounced, Tanqueray. I hear a lot of people pronouncing it Tanqueray. In fact, some bartenders will actually correct you when you say Tanqueray. Uh, but in fact, according to the company, that's the official pronunciation. Tanqueray originated from England, but is now produced in Scotland. Interestingly, the name number 10 comes from a copper still number 10, which was the still that they used for experimenting in small batches. One of the key things that sets this apart is that it's made out of fresh citrus, fresh lemons, limes, and grapefruits. And this is actually targeted towards martinis. Uh, martini is a very clean, very simple cocktail that whose main ingredient is really gin. This is 47.3% alcohol by volume. Wow, as far as the scent, those citrus notes really come through very heavily. Absolutely one of the most unique scents of gins. And last but not least, we have Ransom Old Tom Gin. This is a very, very interesting gin on its own. Just like all the other gins that I've already talked about, this is perhaps the most unique of the bunch here. This is a small batch gin that was created to be as historically accurate as possible 
to mimic the gin of the 1800s. The recipe was created with the help of a well-known historian and mixologist, David Woodridge. And this is best intended for either sipping on its own or pre-prohibition cocktails like the Gimlet or the Tom Collins. This is the only gin of this group that's distilled using corn and barrel aged for three to six months. And as you may have noticed, the color is golden brown and it gets that from the barrel aging process. And let's see how that smells. Wow, that's incredible. It, it actually hardly smells like gin at all. It's a, a lot closer to bourbon. Has a slight brown sugar, vanilla, caramel scent to it. And that's my gin collection. As you can see, every gin has something different to offer. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up down below. And why not subscribe to my channel while you're at it, The Mixing Touch.